Streetwear is building at its core a decentralized peer-to-peer network. Um, that basically means we're providing infrastructure for um, the Web3 space to transport data in real time. Um, we have applications, existing applications similar to that in the decent, uh, in the centralized web. So for instance, Apache Kafka, Amazon Kinesis, they offer these sort of real-time data uh, messaging services, um, also called pub sub services. Um, but the big difference is that Streamer does that in a decentralized fashion. That means we have a peer-to-peer network with several node operators in that network, which are financially incentivized to um, sort of mine their bandwidth. This summer, we're going to be rolling out um, a version which will enable our community members to come on board as node operators within the net- that network and then provide bandwidth to anyone who wants to build on top of the network. Um, And then when it comes to building on top of the network, we have several different use cases for that. So we have the marketplace for selling data. We have the data union framework for kind of crowdsourcing data and monetizing data. Uh, We have data products, which is sort of a more less community focused version of data unions. Um, So that would be, for instance, if an IoT company wanted to monetize the data from their devices, um, then they could use that sort of data product um, framework. Because of its decentralized nature, um, Streamer's service is permissionless, which means that it cannot be censored. So that has good sides and that has bad sides. We are increasingly seeing how people are being um, locked out of services or deplatformed or um, censored by big platforms. Um, And that just cannot happen with the streamer network um, because once it is fully decentralized and once all the nodes are being hosted by a big global community, um, no one has sort of control over the data. Um, However, that being said, what is also really important is that the data which travels through the network is end-to-end encrypted. So even if a malicious actor was to host a node in the network, they don't have access to that data. They actually don't see the kind of data which travels through the network. Um, So only the creator of the data and then the data buyer who needs to be, however, sort of approved by the data creator, um, do get access to that data stream and can see what's sort of hidden behind the encrypted data. One of the other big problems is that currently data is siloed. Researchers don't get access to data, and that's really something the data union framework is trying to solve by um, democratizing the access to data and enabling anyone to crowdsource data sets and to open up data sets to the public. Um, However, at the end of the day, I think it's important to say that we want this to be sort of... um, This is like an effort which needs to be done by the members of the data union or by the data union builders. So we are only providing the underlying infrastructure. So um, data unions are a framework which are built on top of the streamer network. And um, basically you can think of it as an SDK. So it's a developer toolkit Um, which can be integrated pretty much into any existing applications or it allows for completely new use cases. And it's used for um, crowdsourcing data and crowdselling data. So how it all works is that the data from the data union is being transported through Streamer's decentralized network. So um, probably one important thing to state here is that Streamer is not a blockchain. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer network similar to um, sort of the uTorrent network, for example. Um, and so the data is being transported through the network. And then on the receiving end, you have the marketplace, uh, which is sort of the storefront of the network where these data streams can be bought or subscribed to in that case. Um, And then the payments are being made in Ether, which is a cryptocurrency of the Ethereum blockchain. Um, But we are also looking into creating a fiat on-ramp and off-ramp 
So that would mean that payments could also be made and received in um, fiat currencies. Um, and payments can also be made in the sort of na native token of the streamer network, which is the data coin. Um, and we're looking into also a couple of other integrations as well. If we look at the value of the data, um, I think one of the most interesting things is really um, when it comes to the data union use cases that we can create data sets which have just never existed in that form before because no one was able to create them before or they were siloed by Google or by Facebook. Um, and I think that makes it quite an interesting use case. For instance, if there was something like Netflix data union where viewers of Netflix could come together, say like anyone in the UK who's watching Netflix could join that data union and then together they would be crowd selling a data set. Um, I think in that case, the data is more valuable for marketeers. Other use cases, we could create highly valuable data sets for rather researchers or also I think within communities, we could create data sets about, for instance, air pollution. If we have like really just very typical sort of marketing use cases when it comes to the data, but uh, we can also have data sets which have a great impact on civil society, um, which could be used to battle climate change, for instance. Um, yeah. But I think ultimately, um, as I already said, Streamer is just providing the infrastructure, so um, anyone can come across and just build something on top of the infrastructure we are providing. Um, we're also giving out grants to projects we like. <laughs> Tracy is this um, application for fisher folk in the Philippines, which we are developing together with the WWF of the Philippines um, and TX, which is our subsidiary. They're sort of taking care of enterprise clients um, and taking care of the implementation of the streamer spec. And in that case, um, they're helping us with the Tracy project, um, or actually they were the ones which kind of um, formed the partnership um, to now implement the streamer stack within that project. Um, and basically what Tracy is being used for, um, so it's a seafood tracing application um, and it's going to be used for in fisheries improvement sites in the Philippines, along with the WWF, um, to trace and track seafood data from um, fisher folk, which are um, kind of struggling to access financing and loans, because traditionally um, they were subjected to these loan sharks and now um, going forward um, by providing better data about their catch, um, they can actually access professional loans either from centralized finance solutions. So we're working together with the Union Bank of the Philippines, but also with um, DeFi, so decentralized finance solutions, um, one of them being Binance Smart Chain, and which kind of has this whole ecosystem of DeFi platforms built on top of this smart chain. Um, and the other one being um, EasyFi, which is um, a lending solution built on top of the Ethereum uh, blockchain. And um, by accessing these new kinds of loans, um, the fishers have to provide data that they're eligible to receive these loans and that they actually do generate enough income to pay back these loans eventually and that they have enough um, sort of business going on on their end. Um, yeah, and I think what's quite interesting about this use case is that it really has the potential to untap on the one hand side, like a completely new market for lenders um, in the DeFi space, which is um, emerging markets and micro SMEs. So going forward, the plan is really not to only enable this for fisher folk, but also to enable this for any kind of other smaller businesses or farmers in emerging markets. In addition to that, it's also quite exciting is that it really showcases how sort of crowdsourcing of data can um, just really empower our people and create completely new use cases. Um, and hopefully it will improve their businesses also significantly by enabling them to access loans. And also somehow it will also give them the opportunity to get onboarded to new financial services, um, which is also really great for them. Well, the majority of them are unbanked currently, or the majority of people we're working with 